Hi from the One True Scale. This video tests Kato Portram and Centrum trams on a Kato Unitram layout with four turnouts and a crossing. Turnouts and a crossing make the layout a lot more interesting, but you also get collisions, derailments, and power stalls. This video tries to give you a sense of the trade-off between running these attractive high-tech trams on an interesting layout and the effort to deal with these interruptions to continuous running. I don't use any manual or automatic block control stops. I just fix derailments and reposition catch-ups by hand. I leave collisions in the video where instructive. They may look and sound bad, but at this speed they are no problem. I've seen about a thousand collisions with no damage. This is because kinetic energy is proportional to velocity squared, so it's practically nothing in end scale. For example, the kinetic energy dissipated by a real tram hitting a wall at 45 kilometers an hour is equivalent to dropping the tram from 8 meters but for an end scale tram going an equivalent 83 millimeters per second the energy is equivalent to a drop from only a third of a millimeter that fall is probably more gentle than a human setting it on the track the real centrum and portrum trams are nearly identical types operated by two different companies in Toyama, Japan. Toyama is on the opposite coast of Japan as Tokyo and about 300 kilometers away. Shinkansen service arrived in 2015 to complement JR and private railways. The main railway lines in gray separate the Centram and Portram stations by 100 meters, but they plan to have through running in the future. Since 2009, three Centrams have operated a downtown loop south of the station. Other tram types operate all of the south lines. Since 2006, seven Portrams have operated the line north of the station. Only the first kilometer of this line is street running. The remaining six kilometers to the port is an unpaved private right of way. Now, let's go up in the sky with Captain Steve in Chopper 9 and check out the whole layout. A complete cycle of the layout through all the trackage takes about a minute. We'll follow the joined white and black tram. Down on the ground, safe and sound. You can build this layout with two V60 sets, two right-hand turnouts, two left-hand turnouts, and a crossing. Set turnout screws to non-power routing and use just one SX controller because inner and outer loops become joined. 
than just to add diatown buildings and trams. The right-hand traffic track and road plates of the V60 are shown in gray. Unfortunately, as of May 2018, Cotto USA has not announced any square corner or extra straight right-hand traffic road plates. You must either wait or substitute Japanese left-hand traffic road plates from three 40-820 sets, like I did shown in yellow. We can watch a full circuit of the joined black and white trams in this aerial view. The layout fits in a 1,054 millimeter square, but takes up less space oriented like this with some road plates missing. Each turnout lever controls both sets of points, but they are spring-loaded. There are four squared equals 16 possible turnout settings. The four useful ones are all straight, all curved, curved from left of camera, and curved from right of camera, which you are watching. The last two settings join the inner and outer loops so that each tram runs almost the entire track in both directions. The entire layout essentially becomes a large single track loop crossing itself in just three places. These two settings will also have a different route for right-hand traffic versus left-hand traffic shown because of the sprung points. You can watch several times and use sketch or string to visualize this. Now I'll show you quite a few clips to get a feel for the experience of running these poor trams and centrams and also the effort to keep them running. I'll add commentary where relevant. I tried to keep these scenes attractive and prototypical but made many compromises for the sake of testing. I forgot to change out my 1950s autos with modern ones. Right hand traffic and left hand traffic has changed randomly. Panographs are usually lowered so I won't damage them quickly repositioning trams that are catching up. I don't think these real trams can run combined, but I do it anyhow because I like the looks and technical performance, such as this pushing derailment. Dusk and night running really shows off the visible interiors and lighting of these trams. The satin finish of the road plates looks a little bit like rainy streets, and the reflections are beautiful. Adding half-height figures for driver and passengers would be a nice addition. The tram lighting also urges me to light the buildings and street lights, but I think I'll wait until Kado has some sort of plug and play system. The tram lighting is also useful for verifying power.
This must be the croquet method of restarting a collision. Oh, we're going up in the sky again. I hope Captain Steve's night flying rating is current. safe on the ground again. Let's go to the 24-hour American diner and get a burger and a shake and we can watch trams all night. And at dawn, get scrambled eggs and pancakes with plenty of black coffee. At end scale standing height, you can almost see under these trams as they pass by. Others have reviewed Kato port trams and centrams in videos and blogs, but I want to note a few details relevant to performance. Each half has its own motorized truck, which is squeezed between the lower windowsill and the track. Do a Google image search on Kato port tram motor. Each truck encloses a motor flywheel, and 13 plastic gears in a complicated reduction. The 4 by 10 millimeter pager motor fits under the red rectangle and in the red circle, making the truck bottom almost even with the diameter of the low flange wheels. A tram with two trucks would not restrain the articulation as it moved around the track. So the model has a hidden three-body linkage as shown, if it were running a tight curve. It would look like this running an S-curve. Now, let's find the minimum reliable running speed on the layout. This is determined by the two torture curves, the second and third curves from the camera, where each tram must go through point set, frog, 30 degree cross, 30 degree cross, frog, and point set. Typical time to pass this 382 millimeter curve is about 4.5 seconds, which is 45 kilometers an hour in Japanese 1 to 150th scale.
The centrams perform about the same as the portrams. This section focuses on collision and derailment possibilities. It ends with a sideswipe derailment that seems to cause a short because the trams stop and the lights go out. The circuit breaker in the new Kato SX controller seems to only take about a second, whereas the previous S controller took a couple of seconds. This Eco Green tram derailed its rear truck but is re-railing itself. If all trams have power after a collision, you would think that reversing and reversing again would just repeat the same collision, but that doesn't happen because of the spring-loaded points. You can see that these trams are taking a different path after reversing. This clip ends in a T-bone side collision where the tram hit, derails, and, and shorts the track. You can hear the SX controller circuit breaker buzzing. This one is the best synchronization that I've ever caught on video, almost. The turnout to the near left of the camera has a defect. The spring mechanism for this right hand turnout's joint sets of points is much weaker than my other turnouts. It almost always causes a derailment when set to curved, but here set to straight it causes the final derailment. The derailment occurred on this turnout's upper point set, set to straight, which looks like this set to curved. But on both settings, this set of points can take a, a mid position if disturbed by rolling stock. The left hand turnout to near right of camera can be seen in many clips to cause hesitations, and even power stalls. A close-up photo revealed that one of the pavement pieces was higher than the track height. I pressed it under flush and redid the minimum speed test with a few centrams, which improved the 45 kilometers an hour to 39. At first I thought the cause of this was the truck bottom catching on some rough pieces of the track. Visual inspection and close-ups like this one convinced me that the top of the rails was not very level. I was trying pressing the rails down and considering sanding, but on a closer look with straight edges, I realized that there are a lot of optical illusions making the rails look uneven. You can see this in the photos. So don't, don't try messing with the, the rail heads if you suspect a problem. Well, if you made it this far, good for you. That certainly was a lot to digest. So, how should I sum up the Kato Centrams and Portrams? Ironically, these high-tech trams are not the very best performance on the Kato Unitram system. Some lower tech trams that I've tested before run a little slower on the turnouts or resist collisions a little bit better. But the portrams and centrums perform close to the best. And I think they're hands down the most visually pleasing 
tram in N scale, night or day. They are a little noisy, and I don't know how well they will hold up over time. But I am very happy with mine, and am looking forward to more trams like this from Kado, like the Hiroshima 1000 announced already, and hopefully someday a North American PCC streetcar. Thank you for watching. The One True Scale, signing out.